Hey guys, so this is the purple retic. If you saw her in my video from about nine months ago, you would know she was quite small. She fit roughly in my hand, around my shoulder. I could hold her without too much effort, and it wasn't that much of a handful. Now, as you can see, she's definitely got a lot more size to her, and this is uh, getting up into good size territory for a retic. Um, this girl is at least 50% Jampia. Uh, Stephanie Lamar, the Breeder, the snake pusher really couldn't give me an exact estimate on the percentage. It was from prehistoric hets on their dwarf lines working with Jampia blood. And this girl is a purple albino reticulated python. And you can see she's got some fairly good size to her. And over the last nine months, she's been pounding so many rabbits, and she just is such a good eater that those rabbits and that energy has gone to still producing a lot of size. Uh, so again, she's about 13 feet now. Um, she's wrapping me up pretty good here, she just wants to get back in her clean cage, and so we're going to let her go back in there. Uh, but you can see she's actually housed pretty comfortably inside of a Vision 600. Not too much of an extra effort with her. I'm going to get her fed back into that cage so you can see her go in there. Uh, but again guys, so when you're getting into that dwarf blood, you do need to keep in mind that the females still get pretty big. The beauty of it is that they are thin. This isn't a really that retake, it's not very muscular, but she's still growing. So we haven't quite reached that point yet where every time she eats a rabbit, she's gonna go ahead and put a little more girth on to prepare for breeding season. Right now, she is still adding length. It's just a lot slower than it was over the last five, six, even seven months. Um, so again, if you're looking into getting retakes and you think a dwarf may be the way to go, either get the male and hope that it stays on the smaller side if you need something small, but if you can handle a larger snake, um, remember I'm about six foot three. I've got plenty of room to work with this guy, and you know enough strength to handle it if she decides to take off on me. Because remember, it is still a retake; they still move very quickly, and they will take off on you at the last minute. Um, but again, so this was a little bit of an update with the purple dwarf reticulated python. Hope you enjoyed. All right, so the next one that we're going to update with, and again, this is more of a dwarf locale. Um, some people call it super dwarf. It's still referred to as super dwarf, but this is a Kadu, which is one of the larger islands where you find dwarf populations of retics. Um, this is 50% Kadu, 50% mainland, and it is a platinum het anery reticulated python. Now, the anery line is not really known for the Kadu, but uh, Coral Akins, who produced this girl, actually proved his female to be anery this year when he bred it to a het anery and produced a lot of anneries. Now there is a chance that it was just a het anery, so we can call this squirrel maybe 50% het, um, but just based on the color alone and the way that her pattern absorbs, you really can see that the het gene's in there for anery. And so this girl is a 50% kadu, again, kind of a dwarf locale, and she was produced in March of 2012, and so she's just a little bit over two years old now, maybe two weeks, two years, ooh, two years in a week, perhaps. Um, but she's roughly 10, maybe 11 feet at this point. It's got a lot of power to her, a lot of size. Really quick moving, they don't like to sit still. So if you remember nine months ago, again, go back and watch part one. But nine months ago, this girl was ugh, very reasonable and she wouldn't do too much. She just kind of sat there and you could see her on my arm and not a big snake, but just when you get them onto their final adult food stuff and you start pumping them with rabbits and pumping them with food, and again, it's not power feeding. It's getting their regular meals and it's doing non-maintenance feed. When you have that go into effect, you're gonna get a big snake. Regardless of whether it's 50% dwarf, 50% SD, or you're talking 75% SD, 75% dwarf, you still have these capabilities to get a very large snake. Um, again, I don't want to discourage maintenance mode because I mean, a lot of males, you want to keep on maintenance mode, you don't want them to get obese. But with these females, you've got to be careful. If you're expecting to get a small snake, that's fine. Go for 50%, maybe 75% SD. But be careful. Buy from buyers you know are working with stock. Ask for parent pictures, ask for parental sizes, ask for exact percentages if they have it available to you, and ask for locale information. So again, this is a 50% Kadu. This is a platinum het anery, and this is your update on this girl. Okay, guys, last one for you out of the collection that I'm going to show you all right now. This is the Tiger Motley. <laughs> She's gotten big. 
She is just under 12 feet, and she's still staying pretty thin, which is I'm pretty thankful for. Uh, but again, this guy, or sorry, this squirrel has some interesting genetics to her. She was produced by Brandon Bokey over at Priceless Pythons, and she is a 25% super dwarf, 12.5% Jampia, and 67.5%, or 62.5% maybe, uh, mainland. And so it's a big mix of bloods, but the mainland influence is still powerful, even at 62%. The only thing that seems to be keeping this girl from being a mainland is the fact that she's not fattening up. She is staying slimmer, she is keeping a little bit leaner, and she's trying to hit the fan. So I kind of have to keep looking up to make sure she doesn't pop it. Uh, but this girl is, again, a tiger motley, het for purple albino. And she was produced in February of 2012. Okay, yeah. So she, again, just over two years old. Uh, two years, one month old, and a couple of days. Uh, but yeah, you can see that the Super Dwarf blood kind of keeps a little bit of excitement going in the coloration. Some nice greens coming out there. Uh, you can also see that she has a really beautiful belly. That white, white, high contrast that comes with the territory for these tiger mottlies. One of my favorite Kodoms out there. Uh, she's going to hopefully breed into this year. Uh, we're going to try and breed her in December. And she's going to be bred to that golden child het albino that we have. And we're going to hopefully produce some albino, motley, golden child tigers and lavenders and purples. So it'll be interesting and we'll see what we get. Again, this is the tiger motley and she is 25% super dwarf, 12.5% jampia, and the rest is all mainland. Ugh. So there you go. Alright guys, and here is one more update for you. Uh, this is a new project we're starting with, and this is one of the most amazing morphs out there. And it is highly, highly just untouched. This is just a normal anthrax. Uh, has a lot of tiger influence it looks like, I mean it was from a tiger clutch, but just incredible snake. When you cross these back to tigers and produce granite back tigers, when you cross them into platinums, produce granite back platinums, the resulting offspring are just incredible. So I'm really excited to be able to share this with you guys and show you a new project that we're starting on. Uh, this guy was born in 2013, the late part of 2013, and it's just an absolutely phenomenal snake. And one of the coolest things about them is their eyes, which we'll try to show you. It's got these really black, black eyes. And it's such a variable gene. You can get a completely black snake, you can get a completely light colored snake, but as they get older, this pattern just breaks up, the colors change, and again, a really special snake. Uh, so this is an anthrax reticulated python, and this is a mainland. This is not a dwarf, this is not a super dwarf. So once again, this is the new anthrax reticulated python. Next time on The Collection Update.